Standard of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invite you to Let George Do It. Another adventure of George Valentine. Personal notice. If it's so fantastic you can do nothing about it yourself, then you've got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Dear Mr. Valentine, the writing and rewriting of this letter has proved one thing to me, that I can't find the words to convey my desperation. Somehow, in a way I can't explain, my life has been touched by evil, pure, undiluted evil. There is something here too strange for me to comprehend, something unworldly almost. Unworldly almost. It is not only for my sake that I ask for your assistance, but for the continued sanity of my fiancé. Accept the enclosed check as a retainer, Mr. Valentine, and please call on me at once. And it's signed, uh, Gilbert Dressler. Oh, this doesn't make sense, George. Well, it makes enough sense to show that Gilbert Dressler is pretty panicky. I know, George, but this is something too strange to comprehend. Unworldly. Sounds like he's having trouble with banshees. <laughs> Well, whatever is source of trouble, it's our source of income, Brooksy. But how do people let themselves get into this kind of situation? This kind of situation pays the rent. So let's go find out what's on Gilbert Dressler's unhappy mind. In my ten years on the desert, Mr. Valentine, I've witnessed events that would freeze the very marrow in your bones. Yes, I'm not doubting your word, Mr. Dressler, Terrifying but... events. Things that are only spoken about in whispers. Behind locked doors. Yes, but let's be a little more specific. Magic. Voodoo, if you will. An evil beyond evil. They're right here in your own city. But why are you hiring us? Yes, Mr. Dressler. You mentioned something about a fiancé in your letter. What about her? Yes, Gabrielle. I love her. Oh, we're sure of that, Mr. Dressler. But you also wrote something about fearing for her continued sanity. What makes you think her sanity won't continue? Margot. Hmm? Margot? What's that supposed to mean to me? Oh, forgive me. I was referring to Madame Margot. She claims she's a medium. I claim she's a purveyor of black magic. Well, now we're getting somewhere. You're trying to tell us Gabrielle, your fiancé, is somehow being influenced by this Madame Margot. Yes. How? Why, why, she's taking all her money away from her. Oh, how long has this been going on? Since Gabrielle's mother, Mrs. Turner, died. Oh, what happened? Maddie Turner was cleaning her hunting rifle, and it went off. Very unfortunate. The sporting world lost a great devotee because of Mrs. Turner's accident. All right, what do you want us to do? Expose Madame Margot. That's what I want you to do. Expose her? Certainly. I've arranged for you to visit Madame Margot this very afternoon. Here, this is her card. And tonight, you shall attend the seance at the Turner Mansion. A seance? Oh, George, there's nothing I like better than an evening cavorting with the spirit world. <laughs> okay, Brooksy, we'll give it a whirl. I never saw a ghost yet who didn't scream when it was pinched. There's Madame Margot's place, George, 214. Yep, I'll pull up in front. Well, one thing I'll say for George, she's not squeamish about operating in a tough neighborhood. Uh -huh. Well, looks all very proper, Brooksy. Even to the neat little sign on a window. Madame Margot, clairvoyant and medalist. Seances by appointment. Okay, let's go. Well, ring the bell, George. Oh, that's a very good idea. Oh, <laughs> great. Listen to that local color, will you? In a joint like this, I'll settle for nothing less than a swami. Yeah. You have been expected. Please enter, Sahib. Sahib? This way, if you please. Madame Margot offers herself to meditation. However, she will receive you shortly. Straighten your turban, George. Uh, do you mind if we sit down, Mr. Uh... Hasim? Upon uh. this level, that is the name by which I am known. Please be seated. Yes, thanks. And now Hasim will leave you. Seek to attune yourself to the vibration of the sphere. Oh, sure, we'll do just that, Hasim. Well, there's your swami, George. <laughs> I wonder what bottle he floated out of. I'll bet when that towel around his head is unwrapped, it reads Oasis Motel. <laughs> hey, this Madame Margot must do all right. Look at the jade vases. Carved teeth. 
Look at this rug. Oh, Brooksy, for a candy bar in North Africa during the war, I could have filled a barracks bag with this junk. Junk? Why, some of these things are priceless, Bargain George. basement gadgets, Brooksy, part of a pitch. Well, I don't want to argue with you, but look, I... Look, look, Claire, I haven't heard of a setup like this yet that wasn't phony. A shrewd operator in a bathrobe and a crystal ball can make a fortune feeding customers the things they want to hear. Yes, but this Madame Margot is supposed to be uncanny. Yeah. Anyway, that's what Mr. Dressler seems to think. Well, I don't know what her act is, Brooksy, but I'm making book that Margot's got a huge investment in trap doors and mirrors. And one of these days, she's going to trip over her own ectoplasm. Uh, George, huh? George. Oh. I know, of course, that Mr. Gilbert Dressler sent you to me. He gave no reason for the arrangement except that you were his friend. Oh, well, Mr. Dressler just likes to be mysterious. I understand that ten years on the desert can do that to a person. He is obsessed with the idea that I bring harm to Gabrielle Turner. He is a stupid man. Yeah. Well, uh, what about this crystal ball here? What can it tell you about me? Very well. Seek yourself in the past and the future. Margot will seek with you. Believe Margot, and the dimness in the crystal will be swept away and will become as a sudden burst of light. Revealing all. See? Even now the shadow's clear. The image asserts itself. There has been violence and terror in your life. Well, I can't say you're wrong about that. As if many men had come together to do you harm. In a vastness too great for the eye to scan. A vastness? In a desert, perhaps. Many men and many machines. Yes, it is a desert. And you are wearing a uniform. George, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you tell me where this desert is? In what country? Oh, it is plain. Should it startle you that I know? To Margot, the crystal has no secret. It is the Sahara. <laughs> North Africa, huh? Of course, Mr. Valentine. What made you ask that? <laughs> oh, come off it, kiddo. How gullible do you expect one man to be? What are you talking about, Mr. Valentine? Madame Margot, if you get paid for this sort of thing, I'm going out and rent a sarong and a Turkish towel. That's all I need for an easy life. That and a detective phone with a hidden mic. Get out of here. Now, wait a minute. I've got a couple of other things that I... Get out of here. Hussein! Oh, why don't you let that poor guy alone, Margot? Making him stand behind those drapes all this time? Perhaps one day you will laugh yourself to death on your poor humor, Mr. Valentine. George, he's got a gun. Don't worry, Brooksy. Madame Margot can't afford to get rough. This kind of melodrama sometimes leads to scandal. That wouldn't be good business for her. He wearies me with his glibness, Hussein. You should have kept looking in your crystal ball, Margot. Then you could have warned your number one boy. <laughs> Always keep that gun close to his side. You fool. Let's get out of here, Brooksy. Okay, George. You will regret this. Oh, look, honey, don't go dramatic on me. Save those pear-shaped tones for Gabrielle Turner. I don't understand, George. How did she know you were in North Africa? Because she had us tuned in with her little detective phone before she came into the room. Oh. Brooksy, when I was telling you about it, I lied to you purposely. I saw North Africa once from an airplane 10,000 feet up at nighttime. Well, now that we know that Margot reads past, presents, and futures by direct wire, what are we going to do? Have dinner, Brooksy. Oh, fine. And we've got a date with a few assorted ghosts. Oh, fine. <laughs> But how about the rest of these people here, Mr. Dressler? Are they friends of the family, too? A cult of vultures, Mr. Valentine. Parasites of the late Maddie Turner, whose interest in spiritualism is heightened by the free champagne served before every seance. Oh, Gabriel. Uh, Gabriel, my dear. Uh, this is Mr. Valentine and Miss Brooks. How do you do? Uh, how do you do? I suppose you're welcome here, both of you. Even though you've come to sneer at us. Oh, I wouldn't put it that way, Gabriel. We're just here to take a look. There have been scoffers before. Please understand that you've been invited only because Gilbert insisted upon it. Uh, Gabrielle! Uh, oh. Oh, there you are. Have you explained to Gilbert's guests how stupid they are? Hey, where do you get all your information, lady? 
I am Gabrielle's aunt, young lady, Vida Patterson. Oh. I happen to concern myself with the caliber of people with whom Gabrielle is forced to associate. What makes you think Miss Brooks is a bad influence, Miss Patterson? Oh, Gabrielle is emotionally high-strung. People like you, people from the outside, upset her. Ah, from the outside? <clears throat> Uh, my dear, uh, the rest of the party is going into the sanctuary. Madame Margot's waiting. Oh, George, not again. Yep. Let's give the old gal another rumble. Oh. Hey, George. The hair on the back of my neck is going to look funny with my permanent. This thing is scary. Yeah, with all the trimmings. This sanctuary is a great backdrop for Dracula. Candlelight and polka music for a vampire. Have the courtesy to be quiet. Nothing must disturb Madame Margot while she reaches her control. Control? What's that? A voice, Miss Brooks. Margot's link with the spirit world. You'll see, it's very weird. The voice with which Margot speaks will not be her voice at all. Oh, Gilbert, why did you bring these people here? Hush, child, hush. There are alien presences here. Contact has been difficult, but there is a message to one who has traveled from a far place to be here. George. Listen. Listen. It's so many years, so much time. Gilbert. Listen to me, Gilbert. It's Janice. This is impossible. Please listen to me, Gilbert. Janice, what are you doing here? I thought you ran off to Cairo with Cecil. Rid yourself of those who would bring harm to Margot. They are evil. Remember, Gilbert, I've always known what's best for you, my dear. You haven't changed a bit, have you, Janice? Always showing up at the wrong time and knowing what's best. Janice, go away. Get rid of them. Get rid of those who do us harm. You never told me about her, Gilbert. You never mentioned a girl named Janice. She was always interfering, always. I hardly expected her to pop up again, my dear. There is another message here from one who has newly passed over. She is suffering greatly. Oh, no. She has been oh. murdered, shot. She suffers from the anguish of knowing her murder. Oh, no! I, I couldn't help it. I couldn't. Gabriel, <laughs> what is it, child? Her murder has not been avenged. There is blood on the hands of one who has shed it. Listen. She is trying... Stop it! Make her leave me alone. I killed her. Of course I killed her. Leave me alone, all of you. Oh, George. I've never seen anything like this in my life. Yeah, this time, Brooksy, the spirits have the right word for it. Murder. We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Meanwhile, a word about problems, major and minor. You know, a ring that refuses to come off a finger may seem like a major problem, but usually a bit of soap and water does the trick. Stuck rings in an automobile engine would be something else again, and could be very costly, in fact. But today, compounded RPM motor oil keeps the danger of stuck piston rings at just about zero. Even more important, the added compounds in RPM put a stop to the biggest bugaboo of engine wear, internal rust. They also prevent crankcase foaming and stop the formation of gum and lacquer in your car's engine. And a cleaner engine system means extra life for your car. Add up all these advantages of RPM motor oil, and it's easy to see why motorists choose RPM 2 to 1 over any other motor oil in the West. Try this premium quality motor oil tomorrow. Get RPM at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we'll take better care of your car. Now, back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Well, there's an old saying that murder will out, but when it comes pointing its finger from the spirit world, then George finds himself tangled in one of the strangest cases he's ever come across. 
And at the precinct house, the day after the seance, Lieutenant Riley puts it this way. Valentine, ever since I heard that girl confess to murder while she was talking to a ghost, I've just been breathless waiting for you to drop around. (laughs) Yeah, it's a wordy, isn't it, Lieutenant? Well, maybe your boys just didn't feel like being clever the day Mrs. Turner was murdered. Is that why you called it a hunting accident? Now, look, Miss Brooks, I'm not perfect like your boyfriend, Valentine. And I'd be the first one to admit that. But as a matter of fact, I personally contribute to the support of you guys, a little thing called taxes. I'm just perfect enough to want a little action for my money. Valentine, three months ago, we were called in by Beda Patterson to investigate the death of her sister, Maddie Turner. We called it an accident because that's the way the setup looked. Because there wasn't any reason to call it murder. Well, whatever happened to that suspicious nature of yours, Lieutenant? Yeah. A prominent society woman is found dead, shot. A woman who surrounds herself with a house full of sponging friends. Don't you remember what your correspondence course says about a situation like that, Lieutenant? Uh, look, look. When a person is found dead with her finger on the trigger, we consider the reports of ballistics, medical examiner, and a dozen other experts. Then we fumbling police arrive at certain conclusions. In the death of Mrs. Turner, that conclusion was accidental death. Here, here. Bravo, Lieutenant. But how could so many people fumble about the same thing? Uh, yeah. Does that confession mean that Gabrielle is going to stand trial for murder, Lieutenant? Well, I doubt it. In that household of crazy people, she's the squirreliest of the lot. Unless her aunt, Mrs. Patterson, isn't just a little bit ahead of her. Then Gabrielle will be committed to an institution. Yep. Uh, She's home now under the care of a physician and under police guard. She can't even remember confessing, much less how or why she killed anybody. Uh Uh-huh. You wouldn't mind if Claire and I dropped in on the Turner family, would you, Lieutenant? Well, sure, sure, go ahead. You'd be in good company. But uh, take my advice and hide when the wagon comes. Those young interns sometimes have trouble figuring who fits the straitjacket. Lieutenant, I secretly love all men who say nice things like that. Oh, it's you two. I was beginning to hope that I'd only hired you in a dream. Look, Gilbert, let's both get real grown up and face facts. You really did hire me, and we're both stuck. I'm not in the habit of paying people who bungle their jobs. It must be quite obvious that I don't need your alleged services any longer. But we haven't finished our job, Mr. Dressler. So if you will return my fee, which you have not earned... Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, let's chat, Gilbert. Mind if we come inside? I certainly do. Thanks a lot. Close the door, Brooksy. Now, look, Gilbert, you hired me to do a job. I'm not backing out of it. Why should you? You admit you failed, don't you? You don't have much room to talk, Mr. Dressler. Who was that Janice you were talking to last night? Janice is dead. She died nearly ten years ago. Ten years? Then how did she... I dislike to say it, but even I am now convinced that Margot is not a fraud. How could she have known about Janice? Oh, it's very simple. You blurted out Janice's name as soon as Margot began to broaden her age. Yeah, it's a good thing Margot didn't drop her H's, Mr. Dresser. You might have come up with the name of some little barmaid in Soho. You're not very amusing, young lady. Now, what about Gabrielle? Where is she? They've taken her away, Mr. Valentine. Poor girl. I was deeply attached to her. Uh Uh-huh. I'll bet her aunt has overcome, too. Vida Patterson is a remarkable woman. She buries her sorrow in her books. Books, ledgers would be a better word. Where is she? In the library. She explicitly informed me that she wishes to grieve. Well, now, that's very touching. Come on, Claire. What is it, Gilbert? I told you I wanted no interruptions unless it's absolutely necessary. It's absolutely necessary. Oh, Oh, it's the intruders again. Yes, I hate to take you away from your tears, Miss Patterson, but there are a few questions I want to ask you. And by what right? You're not the police? Oh, this won't take long. Just a moment of your lonely time and you can go right back to eating your heart out. What is it you want? I want to know a little bit more about the murder of Maddie Turner. It was murder, wasn't it? Oh, imagine the ingratitude of the child. Killing my poor sister after all the wonderful things we've done for her. Oh, yes, yes. She was so overcome by those wonderful things, she can't even remember killing your sister. Oh, Gabrielle has lapses of memory. An unfortunate trait which she inherited from her father's side of the family. Oh, well, this wealth you were talking about, what happens to that? Oh, how could you mention money at a time like this? (laughs) Well, let's mention it anyhow. Who gets it? Well, of course, Gabrielle inherited the mother's estate, and now that she will be declared insane, why, I suppose I... Well, I don't know. I, I've never given it a thought. No, I'll just bet you haven't. Well, thanks a lot, Miss Patterson. I just know it'll kill you every time you spend a penny of all those thousands of dollars. Get out of here! Miss Patterson doesn't like us, George. Yeah, we've got crazy ideas, Brooksy. All right, come on. 
Let's go see whether one of them will pay off. What makes people like that, George? Well, if you're talking about the zanies who wander in and out of the Turner Mansion, the answer is money. From here, that's the only way the rag makes sense. Well, I don't want to crowd you with funnies, George, but there's Hasim again. Huh? Yeah, he's planted up ahead there. The corner of the house this time. How do you like that? See him in the shadow? Yeah. Let's find out what he's got on his mind. <laughs> Still looks sinister, even in a pinstripe suit. Yeah. Well, Hasim, doing a little snooping on your own? You go to great lengths to involve yourself in difficulty, my rash friend. Brace yourself, Hasim. You're no friend of mine. Furthermore, you are in our way. Georgie's and... still got that gun. Watch it, Percy. All right, pick up the gun quick. Yeah, George. Here you are. Yeah, you shouldn't carry such things around after dark, Hasim. And so it doesn't accidentally go off and hurt somebody, I'll just take out the clip. And the extra bullet in the chamber. You will be sorry you did this. There you are. Take your plaything. I'll keep the bullets. Now, why did Madame Margot send you here? I know nothing. You're so right. Okay, take off, nature boy. Beat it. I'm tired of playing patty cake with people out of storybooks. You know what? It adds up, Claire. It really does. It does? Uh, huh? Brooksy, I want you to get down to headquarters as soon as possible. Tell Lieutenant Riley to get that whole crew together, all those pixies who were at the seance last night. Including the spirits, George? Including Gabriel Turner. Tell the lieutenant to bring them all back to the sanctuary. But why? If there really was a murder, Brooksy, I won't be able to live with myself until I find out the reason for it. Right now, I've got a date with a crystal ball. And maybe I'll get a preview. Margo, in the jargon of the street, your chances aren't worth a dime. Stop speaking in riddles, Mr. Valentine. What's on your mind? You are, Margo. Madam, accessory after the fact, Margo. The fact being murder. If I were acquainted with your brand of humor, perhaps I would be amused. I doubt it. Look, you're worried, honey. That's why you tag that small-time Svengali on me. You can be sent to jail for years and years, and that's really something to worry about. What are you trying to say? Well, I hate to sully those shell-like ears of yours with nasty words, Margo, but... Just take my advice and be my buddy for the next few hours. Why do you speak to me like this, as if I'm As if a... you're a phony, and you are. You can throw your voice pretty well, but last night you threw it a little too far. What do you want me to do? I want you to finish that seance you started. It never did get done. But for what reason? <laughs> so you can turn state's evidence. Now, a clever girl like you can appreciate a good twist. Oh, I think I understand. Yes, I think you do. So let's not keep the cult waiting, Margot. Besides, Lieutenant Riley is a very impatient man. Valentine, if you can figure out how this girl murdered Maddie Turner by asking Maddie Turner how she did it, I'm going to turn in my badge, buy a turban and a crystal ball and apprehend criminals while I sit in my easy chair. <laughs> Just stick around, Lieutenant. This Margot will give you a lesson you'll never forget. <laughs> You know, that's the wonderful thing about being a police lieutenant. Every amateur I meet wants to give me lessons. But Margot's no amateur. All these people think she's the greatest thing that ever happened to them. They believe whatever Margot says. Valentine, haven't you been the cause of enough suffering for poor Miss Patterson? I feel it is my obligation to defend her against your ill manners. Yes, and I demand to know by what authority you have entered my house. Why have you brought Gabrielle here? I'll have the law. You already have it. Lieutenant, this is Miss Patterson. She lives here. You got troubles, Miss Patterson? Oh, I... Why, why, no, it's just that it's, it's Gabrielle. Gabrielle's okay. She's in the sanctuary with the doctor. I wouldn't worry about her. Maybe we'd better go in. Margot's had plenty of time to get wound up. Okay. Hello, Gabrielle. How do you feel? I don't understand. This all happened before, long ago. A very long time ago. Yes, now, you're all right. Just take it easy. I really didn't mean to. I didn't hate my mother, you know. Just sit tight, Gabrielle. And whatever happens, don't say anything. You understand? Don't say anything. Of course. Of course, I understand. I killed her, but I didn't mean to. Tonight, for the last time, we seek to journey together into a strange land. A strange land where familiar faces and forgotten dreams dwell without perishing. Already the vapors which cloud our way are cleared. There is someone here who is trying to get through. She wishes to speak. 
Is this why you dragged me here, Valentine? I know a ventriloquist when I hear one. You know a lot more than the rest of these people. Just get this pitch, Lieutenant. has been grievously wrong. There is so much that stands in her way of happiness here. She wishes to speak to us. She says an injustice has been done. The way is clear. Peace. Stop her. Peace. Can't you see this is a fraud? You don't know what you're doing. Send her back. Listen. Shh. You're breaking up the party, Miss Patterson. Why don't you relax? Have they harmed you, Gabrielle? Maddie. And you, Vida. All that blood. Oh. Your sister's oh. blood. Mine. Murder. Oh, stop it. Stop it, please, please. Murder. You watched me die. Oh. Death becomes you, my sister. Oh, send her back. Oh, let's stop it. I did it. I did it. I killed her. I killed her. I'll take over from here, Valentine. Well, how about that, Brooksy? A killer trap by a ghost. Only there wasn't any ghost. If I've got to say it, and I've got to say it, huh? you're a genius. Oh, that's okay, Brooksy. You can say it. But all I had to know was that Margaret was a phony, and Vita Patterson thought Margaret was always on the level. Except once, that is. Astound me, genius. What do you mean, except once? Vita paid Margaret to produce Maddie Turner and frighten Gabrielle into confessing. Well, why should Gabrielle confess to a murder she didn't do? Brooksy, there's a lot of evil people in this world. Vita Patterson is one of them. She knew her niece had a memory blank the night of the murder. So all this time, she's been making Gabrielle believe that she killed her own mother. So all you did was make Margot produce Maddie Turner again. Yep, only this time Maddie smoked. When Vita heard an imitation of her sister's voice, she thought it was the real thing. It was too much for her. Oh, well, there's just one thing I still don't understand, George. What happened when you went back to see Margot? Oh, she read my palm. Yeah, she said I had a wonderful heart line. Oh? Uh-huh, Margot looked at my hand and said I was a lover. Oh, well, I got a pretty good heart line myself. Yeah? Look at it, George. Yeah. You know what I think, George? No, tell me what you think. Well, I think we ought to get our heart lines crossed and see what happens. And now, a word of importance to motorists. Maybe you've run into the kind of motorist who always says, Grease is grease, and it doesn't matter where you take your car for lubrication service. Well, don't you believe him. At independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations, they use many specialized grades of RPM greases and oils to give your car a thorough lubrication. And each one is tailor-made to do a wear-saving job at some vital wear point on your car. The regular 1,000-mile grease job at these stations is done by trained experts. They follow a lube chart approved by the manufacturer of your car. And they take pride in doing a spick-and-span clean job for you. Next time your car is due for lubrication service, rely on the standard station or the independent Chevron gas station where they say, and mean, we'll take better care of your car. Next week, when you tune our way for another adventure of George Valentine, you'll hear... Hey, Brooksy, tell me something. Yes, George? How would you like to play Cigarette Girl at the Kit Kat Club tomorrow night? You mean in one of those fluffy short skirts and long black stockings? Yeah, the works. Yeah, but what are you talking about, George? We're going to stage a little drama, Brooksy, with a cast of two. A Carnation and Art Gary. And I have a hunch the Carnation will be the star of the show. <laughs> Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and Standard stations throughout the West. Let George Do It stars Robert Bailey as George with Francis Robinson as Claire. Wally Mayer appears as Lieutenant Riley. Tonight's story was written by Morton Fine and directed by Don Clark. Also heard in the cast were Don Morrison as Gilbert, Irene Tedrow as Margot, Sarah Selby as Vida, Gene Bates as Gabrielle, and Lal Chan Mehra as Hasim. The music is composed and conducted by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to 
Let George do it. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.